Hi, this is Kat Rourke with the Cape Cod Institute. And it is a pleasure to be joined today by Maria Sawa. Maria is a master teacher, positive psychologist, international consultant, and an author of two books, A Short Course in Happiness After Lost and Every Day Counts. We are pleased to be welcoming her to her first teaching appearance at the Cape Cod Institute this June for her course, The Vertex of Change, Leveraging Moments of Grief, Illness, Hardship, and Sudden Change to Accelerate Growth. Welcome, Maria. Oh, Kat, so good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yes, we are very excited to have you with us this year. Um, I thought we would start by just hearing a little bit more about how you came to the work of positive psychology. Um, and this interest in what I have heard you call the paradox, uh, positive deviancy, and to quote a bit of your title from this course, The Vertex of Change. Yeah. So actually, I came to this work through work that you and I share in common, which was an interest earlier on in our lives in uh, pediatric oncology or the world of, of terminal illness for children. And in my first year of that work, years ago, back at Dana-Farber in Boston, I noticed that there were families who had been given the worst news, that their children were not going to survive, who actually grew together as a family. And then there were other families who's, who had been given wonderful news, meaning that their child had a kind of cancer that was absolutely curable, and, and witnessed some of those families fall apart. And it raised in me this question, those families that thrive, even in the harshest moments, what do they know? And how can we bring that to all of our lives? And so that engendered in me this question about resilience, which really has been the cornerstone of my work for almost 30 years now. And along the way of that journey, positive psychology emerged as a subspecialty. And positive psychology helps us look at things through the lens of who are we at our best? And so the territory that I love to work in, and I'm so excited to be bringing this to the Cape, is you know, who are we at our best in the most difficult moments in life? And as clinicians, counselors, and coaches, how do we bring that knowledge and wisdom to bear into the treatment room? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, you mentioned Everyday Counts and that the organization I was working for at the time used that as, as part of our textbook for working in the hospital with kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I think partly because of what you just noticed uh, or what you just mentioned is the who are we as clinicians at our best. Um, I appreciate that focus as well. Thank you, yeah. So looking forward to exploring what traditionally has been called the territory of resilience or adaptive coping and bringing to it a kind of um, a very, I find it very exciting framework, which has emerged from the science of positive psychology, asking this question, who are we at our best, has helped us understand something really powerful about the notion of paradox. Tell me more. <laughs> so we used to think that resilience was almost an either or kind of thing. You either had it or you didn't, right? Or you were lucky enough to be born in a resilient family or not. And it turns out that the strategies and practices and perspectives that actually elevate resilience are available to all of us, meaning that whoever our clients or our patients are, whoever we are at this moment in our life, we can activate greater resilience. In understanding that and opening up that conversation, as we began to study people who were extremely resilient under the worst conditions over time, like think Nelson Mandela in jail for 27 years, we came to recognize that health actually rests in paradox. That when we have cognitive flexibility, meaning we let go of either or thinking, when we have the tolerance of emotional flexibility, meaning we allow ourselves to feel what we feel, no matter how difficult that is, and we know how to move forward with those emotions into slightly healthier, wiser states. When we let go of rigid ways of behaving in the world. In other words, when we can hold both the state of feeling broken, uh, grieving, angry, bitterness, despair, and make choices that bring us toward resilience and thriving, when we can hold both, that's where health resides. Mm. 
Thank you. You mentioned many different uh, clinicians in the beginning. You said coaches, leaders, supervisors. Um, can you tell me a little bit about who you imagine would benefit from your course? Yeah, first and foremost, the, the course is designed for practitioners. So people who are actively practicing, either as therapists, as social workers, as nurses, uh, physicians, psychiatrists, co and, and coaches who are practicing on behalf of the well-being of a person, a family, or a team. Um, the other set of people who would benefit from this are leaders, so systems managers, you know, the team leaders, the head supervisor, the um, head of a mental health organization who are looking for ways to understand at a systems level how change is potentiated, how to build resilient teams. So we'll be talking at the individual level and we'll be talking at the group or the systems level throughout the week. That's great. Can you tell me a little bit more, I know you talked about the topic, but about the pacing of the course and what you imagine it will be like in the classroom? Well, so, you know, there's no point in my mind of studying positive psychology mm -hmm. without having a bit of fun along the way. <laughs> so definitely we are, we are going to be looking at data. We're going to be looking at research. We're going to be looking and having conversations about clinical application or about application for the team. And we're going to be, you know, ex experimenting also with some of these practices. We're going to learn about character strengths and meaning. And what does that look like? So we're going to have homework, uh, you know, in the afternoon to like, what would it be like? One of the things we're studying, for example, is appreciative inquiry, which is changing the question toward a life-giving question. So what would it be like to be on the Cape on a Tuesday afternoon and really consciously choose, okay, I could ask that or... I could ask a much more life-giving question and see what happens to our conversations. So we'll be experimenting along the way. Okay. Well, homework on the Cape is not a bad thing as long as it's at the beach, right? <laughs> yeah. All the homework could be done at the beach. Yes. Well, you did mention the Cape. So I'll ask you a few things about what you're excited about in terms of teaching on Cape this summer. So one of my first experiences with the Cape Cod Institute was being a student in a Meg Wheatley class years ago. It was actually two, 2001, right after 9-11. Mm. And um, what I got to remember at that time was just the beauty, how the natural beauty of being in the ocean and near the dunes and um, watching the sea life emerge around you, how healing that is. How, how both inspiring and healing that is. So that one of my favorite things is, to, you know, bonfires on the beach at night kind of thing um, and watching the, the, the sea creatures swim by. <laughs> um, the other thing that's wonderful is, you know, the Cape is just a beautiful destination point for people around the world. So I don't, you know, watching sort of the world come towards you and all of its gorgeous variety and quirkiness and particularity and, um, sense of celebration of the summer is just a delight. It's a delight. Well, you're making me want summer right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that little glimmer of, mm. of what's to come. Mm. Uh, just a quick question about what you are most uh, excited about in your work right now. One of the things that I'm taking a deeper dive into is this notion of bringing appreciative inquiry. So the, the shifting the focus towards standard questions like what's broken or what's not working or what's wrong or what am I worried about? What am I anxious about? Toward questions that are life-giving and applying them in different uh, domains of life. I'm involved with an international effort on bringing appreciative inquiry to positive education, to educational systems around the globe. I'm bringing appreciative inquiry into moments of darkness, the harshest moments in our lives. You know, I was thinking about just Notre Dame yesterday, you know, the, 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 the beauty of the world's generosity toward already contributing to repair of this sacred treasure. And what would it be like if this were the moment in which the citizens of Paris and the global citizens of the world really shifted toward a greater generosity and kindness and appreciation toward each other. You know, so the power of those life-giving questions is really fascinating to me right now. Mm, yes, and those, and those potential positive outcomes. Um, right, yeah. right. And then to make it 
like it's very specific, say, for example, for a clinician, what if you, you know, you're working with a, a client who's wrestling with a depression that doesn't seem to sort of shift and, you know, what would it be like for that client to see him or herself, her, herself through the lens of their character strengths and how might that shift their experience of their depression? So the depression becomes a part of the story, not the whole of the story. Mm -hmm. So I am depressed or I am sad or I am feeling like I can't get out of bed and I know how to ask for help and I have, I persevere. That's one of my character strengths and I can use my social intelligence to navigate this moment, you know? So build, this is indicative, this is to bring us right back to paradox. Building in the end helps us hold two seemingly opposite truths at the same time. And that's where health resides. Wonderful. Well, thank you for this. We're very excited to have you with us this summer and to just being on Cape with you as well. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye or? I, you know, I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to explore this with the attendees, to um, practice with what it's like to bring a positive psychology approach to our work in such a gorgeous setting. So very, very thankful and so, so looking forward to it.